Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the fifth Sunday of Lent. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Matthew Charlesworth. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of his Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, welcome to this fifth Sunday of Lent. Let us acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves to celebrate these most sacred mysteries. I confess to, to Almighty God, God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. By your help, we beseech you, Lord our God, may we walk eagerly in that same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death. We make this prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The first reading is taken from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you home into the land of Israel. And you shall know I am the Lord when I open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people, and I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live. And I will place you in your own land, then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken, and I have done it, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our response. With the Lord there is mercy, in him is plentiful redemption. With the Lord there is mercy, and in him there is plentiful redemption. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. O let your ears be attentive to the sound of my pleading. With the Lord there is mercy, in him is plentiful redemption. If you, O Lord, should mark our iniquities, Lord, who could stand? But with you is found forgiveness, that you may be revered. The with the Lord, Lord there, there is mercy, mercy. in him, him is plentiful, plentiful redemption. redemption. I long for you, Lord. My soul longs for his word. My soul hopes in the Lord, more than watchmen for daybreak. More than watchmen for daybreak, let Israel hope in the Lord. With the Lord oh, there is mercy, in, in him is plentiful redemption. redemption. For with the Lord there is mercy, 
In him is plentiful redemption. It is he who will redeem Israel from all its iniquities. With the Lord, Lord there, there is, is mercy. mercy. In, In him, him is plentiful redemption. The spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. A second reading is taken from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, those who are in the flesh cannot please God, but you are not in the flesh, you are in the spirit. If the spirit of God really dwells in you, anyone who dwells Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, although your bodies are dead because of sin, your spirits are alive because of righteousness. If the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised, Jesus, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will give life to mortal bodies also through his spirit who dwells in you. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Glory and praise to you, O Christ. Glory, Glory and praise, praise to you, O Christ. Christ. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. He who believes in me shall never die. Glory and praise to you, O Christ. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, a certain man was ill. Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. It was Mary who anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was ill. So the sisters sent to him, saying, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, This illness is not unto death. It is for the glory of God so that the Son of God may be glorified by means of it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then, after this, he said to the disciples, Let us go into Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were but now seeking to stone you, and are you going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble, because he sees the light of this world. But if anyone walks in the night, he stumbles, because the light is not in him. Thus he spoke. And then he said to them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I go to awake him out of sleep. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will recover. Now Jesus had spoken of his death, but they thought that he meant taking rest in sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And for your sake, I am glad that I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Thomas, called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. Now when Jesus came, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles off. And many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them concerning their brother. 
When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him while Mary sat in the house. Mary said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. And even now I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, he who is coming into this world. When she had said this, she went out and called her sister Mary, saying quietly, The teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she rose quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still in the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews who were with her in the house consoling her saw Mary rise quickly and go out, they followed her, supposing that she was going to the tomb to weep there. Then Mary, when she came where Jesus was and saw him, fell at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled, and he said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, deeply moved again, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone lay upon it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, by this time there will be an odor, for he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you would believe you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me. But I have said this on account of the people standing by, that they may believe that you have sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with bandages, and his face wrapped with a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what he did, believed in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today I want to talk about the readings, but I also want to say a few words about the past week in South Africa and how the readings have resonated with my experience of them. Today's readings talk about three things. We hear talk of prophecy in the first reading, a righteous spirit in the second reading, and death and resurrection in the gospel, or in Lazarus's case, resuscitation from the dead. In a nutshell, we are witnesses to the promise of new life in the world, even as we see a huge threat to our life at the moment. The extraordinary actions we as a country are doing at this time are done to save life, so that in these fearful and anxious times, we might look ahead to life after the lockdown and know that we did everything possible to save each other's lives. The raising of Lazarus 
which was our gospel text this morning, is the third text from John that has traditionally been used during the Lenten period to prepare catechumens for baptism. Baptism, we remember, is the sacrament wherein we are given new life. In this, the greatest of Jesus' signs, the lessons for baptism are brought to a climax. We find ourselves, perhaps in this time, in the tomb of Lazarus, waiting for the Lord. But we are promised today that the dead man, Lazarus, will come out of the tomb. Jesus says, I came so that they might have life and have life abundantly. Let us remember that this is Jesus' desire for all of us this Lent, that we will have life and have it abundantly. This abundant life is also what he invites Martha to. He is the resurrection and the life. In our second reading, Paul, in his letter to the Romans, develops what this means for us who believe in Jesus and have been baptized in Christ's name. We are told that by virtue of the Spirit of Christ that we received at our baptism, we are caught up in his resurrection and can therefore be sure that someday even our mortal bodies will share his life. How can we find life at home at this moment? What are the life-giving activities that we can do as families and friends, even while we are physically separated? Can we be patient with each other? Can we call and reach out to those who are alone and let them know that they are remembered? We can all help each other experience the gift of life by small actions of prayer and charity to communicate to each other. Finally, in our first reading, we hear from the prophecy of Ezekiel, where resurrection functions as a sign that points to the power of God, the power of God to bring the exiles in Babylon back to the land of Israel. Putting this all together, I believe that we are reminded that life and resurrection are not private matters. The new life God gives through the Spirit is not just for us to enjoy but it brings communities together, as well as individuals, and it reintroduces life into them. We must endeavor to be righteous and believe Jesus' words so that we might have life and live it to the full and share that with others. At this time, the prayerful support of individuals and communities are needed more than ever as we learn to be church in a new way. And God's power is seen in how he can still touch each of us right where we are, even in lockdown. So those three points that I think are made in the readings today have to do with prophecy, righteousness, and death and resurrection. And as I was thinking about this this past week, I saw these three things play out in what has happened in our country. Firstly, the fear of death, and a particular type of resurrection. The news and gradual realization of the effects of COVID-19 have left many of us anxious, fearful, and desperate, fearing for our jobs, our employees, our friends, and family. But the nation experienced a mini-resurrection in their spirits as we listened to how our president laid out plans that offered all of us the hope of life. Out of the hopelessness, doom and gloom that pervaded the country, Cyril Ramaphosa was able to spark a new hope. It was as if we were given new life, and in that the country too received something very vital, hope. But we also have the prophetic utterances of the scientists and doctors and medical staff who have worked tirelessly along with the journalists who have all worked to help prepare and educate our population so that we can accept that what we have to do is in the interest of each other's lives and the common good. And hasn't it been marvelous to see the solidarity and generosity in our nation that has been evident in these last few days? 
This crisis has awakened the resolve of very many people across the land. This is what prophecy does. It calls for bold action in the name of higher ideals and righteous values, such as putting lives ahead of profits, the common good ahead of our selfish needs, reminding us of what is most important to God. In the case of Ezekiel, God was saying that he will put his spirit within us and we shall live. We need not fear. We will know that it is the Lord because he will remove us from our graves. We are doing things that choose life over death. We can still receive his spirit today at home. We can encourage and support each other and feel God's encouragement and support for us when we pray. Perhaps I'm stretching this a little, but I felt that perhaps many in the world have been like corpses in their graves, watching horrors unfold elsewhere in the world, unable to move or act. And we needed bold leadership to wake us from our slumber and ask us to take seriously the situation we are in. Like Mary and Martha saying to Jesus that their friend Lazarus was ill, we too can say to the Lord that our nation's population, our brothers and our sisters, are also, or soon might be, ill. And like in the Gospel, where we heard the shortest verse in the Bible, I think Jesus would weep at hearing this too. He would weep with us on hearing how sick the world is, and we have no option but to join together and fight against this disease with the Lord's help. He has blessed our nation with brave doctors and nurses, prophetic politicians, creative leaders, and most valuably, the time to still act. I do believe that what we have seen in the last week is a serious turning point in our country. Our country, like Lazarus, is ill. The Lord has sent prophets in the form of the many men and women who argue that for the common good, we must be as still as possible. We must remain where we are. We must listen to them and hear the echoes of the word of God in what they say, in how they are advocating for the life that is God's gift to us, to all of us. I believe it is fitting that the country is being asked to contemplate these readings at home during our time of Lent. God holds out the promise of life to us, and we are not abandoned. For those of us who feel dead already, we need to remind each other of God's love, of our love for them. As we adapt to life in the coming weeks, we can say, as we did in the psalm this morning, that my soul waits for the Lord. In this time of waiting, where we are forced to make a spiritual communion, we yearn to be together again. We yearn to be gathered in community again. But our Lord is always ready to answer our prayers. And now we wait for Him, whilst we wait for this epidemic to pass as well. Let us pray today for all the medical staff, and those in essential services who are working hard to keep our society functioning whilst we wait at home. Let us pray today for all the sick in South Africa and around the world, that they might receive the care and support that they need. Let us pray for our children and grandparents, who will obviously feel alone at this time. Let us pray that the Lord might show his face and shower his love upon them. Let us also remember families and all those who love each other, that the Spirit's gifts of patience and fortitude be especially theirs at this time. God promised new life to us. Let us now, in the silence of our hearts, say yes to that new life. Thank God for it, and treasure all the gifts he has bestowed upon us. And let us give thanks 
and pray for the prophets in our lives and in our country at this time. Amen. Let us stand and profess our belief in God. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, who was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic Church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now let us gather our prayers to present them to the Lord. For the Church at this time, that God will transform our fears into hope, selfishness into love, and death into new life. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord, graciously hear us. For all who share in the Eucharist, especially those who join us by making a spiritual communion, that as we share in Christ's gift of himself, we will live the new life of the resurrection and give witness to Christ by our words and our deeds. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord, graciously hear us. For an end to the coronavirus pandemic, that God will guide and inspire everyone working to curtail the virus and help them to employ proper hygiene. We pray, too, for those who are sick at this time. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord, graciously hear us. For all who must face death each day, particularly emergency personnel and hospital chaplains, that God will strengthen their spirits and help them honour the life of each person they assist. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord, graciously hear us. For all who are experiencing divorce or the death of a relationship, that God will heal their pain help them to face the issues with courage and give them hope for their future. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord, graciously hear us. For all the people of the world, that God will turn hearts from violence, protect the innocent, open new understanding of each other's fears and hopes, and heal the wounds and mistrust that exists. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord, graciously graciously hear us. Father, we thank you for the gift of prayer. We thank you that we can make all these prayers, spoken and unspoken, to you through Jesus Christ our Lord, your Son and our brother. Amen. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of his water and wine, we come to share in the divinity of Christ, to humble himself, to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord, wash me from my iniquity, cleanse me from my sin. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands. For the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all God's holy church. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teaching of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as true man, he wept for Lazarus, his friend, and as eternal God raised him from the tomb, just as taking pity on the human race, he leads us by sacred mysteries to new life. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race, and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all. 
for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ your Son, our Saviour, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of his love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favour on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Buti Tlachale and Duncan Soke, our bishops, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and the entire people you have made your own. Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters. Inspire in us words and actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Make us serve them truly after the example of Christ and at his command. And may your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ. And all the dead, whose faith you alone have known, admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever, there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Apostles and Martyrs, Saint Ignatius, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look, not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit.
Lamb of God. We take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God. We take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God. We take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy really that you should enter under my roof, but, but only you say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. And may the blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defines spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion, which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here. Everyone who lives and believes in me will not die forever, says the Lord. Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ, in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And I feel so spirit. Bow your heads for a blessing. Bless, O Lord, your people, who long for the gift of your mercy, and grant that what at your prompting they desire, they may receive by your generous gift. May the Lord bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace glorifying the Lord with our lives. Thanks be to God.